Hey everyone, as requested, here's a video how to set up the coin acceptor for use on your bar top or whatever else you want to use it for. This acceptor can be programmed to use up to three different coins. If you're using another version that accepts more than three different type of coins, these instructions should still work for you. On the side, we have the four pins that we'll be using, 12 volts, coin, ground, and counter. Uh, your 12 volts positive input is red and your ground is black like with most electronics um, but notice on here that there's a gray wire connected to the red uh, positive input wire uh, they're connected to the same exact pin so you could use either one i'll go ahead and cut the gray one off and just use the red one um, the next two wires on here are your coin and your counter these are what's going to pulse to send a signal to your uh, usb encoder Beneath that, we have a normally open and a normally closed switch. Leave it in the up position for the normally open. And beneath that, we have um, a switch that controls how fast the poles are sent to your USB encoder. I like to leave mine in the down position for slow. Not sure how well it will, leave, it will work if I leave it in the uh, fast. I just went ahead and cut the gray wire off that was connected to my red wire. And I'm just using the red wire and the black wire. Black to ground, red to positive. I also connected two extra pieces of wire to my coin and my counter wires. I'll connect these to a multimeter in a few minutes. The power supply I'm using is a 12 volts power supply. This one is adjustable from 3 to 12 volts, but you could use whatever 12 volts power supply you have. This one is a 600 milliamp per hour. Um, the coin acceptor doesn't use much power. According to the specs, it said 65 milliamp per hour is what it uses. The first settings I'm going to go in is the parameter settings for changing the parameters for each coins. Uh, to get in the parameter settings, go ahead and press the plus and minus buttons together. And the LED will switch to a letter A. Once it's switched to the letter A, go ahead and press your set button and that'll change it to the letter E. Now use your plus and minus button to set how many different types of coin you'll be programming. After you're done with that, press set and it'll change to H1. Now use your plus and minus buttons to set how many samples you'd like to use later whenever you're programming for our coin one. The manual recommends a minimum of 15. Uh, depending what um, coin acceptor you're using, you might be able to go higher. Uh, once you're set your samples, press set and now you'll get P1. This is where you set how many poses you'd like for your first coin. I set mine at 1. Um, next hit set and you'll get an F1. Now this is where you set your sensitivity for how uh, sensitive it is to each specific coin. This is just talking about your first coin. Mine will be a nickel. I'll set it to 10. The manual recommends a minimum of 5. Now after you press set you'll get H2 which is talking about coin 2. And we're back to setting how many samples of coin 2 we'll be using for programming later. You'll just keep repeating these steps until you're finished setting up however many different types of coin you'd like to set up. The second set of coin I'm going to be using on mine are dimes. And for dime, I'd like two uh, credit. So I'll set my poles to two. Um, quarters are going to be the third set of coin that I use. And I would like seven for my quarters. So whenever I set up my quarters, I'm going to have uh, seven for the poses. Once you set the parameters for all your coins, you'll get an A that display on the screen again. Uh, press set once more after you get that letter A, and it should change to just the letter E. After that, you could unplug your uh, power, and it should automatically save. Now we'll do the sampling for each different coins that you'd like to use. Uh, so go ahead and plug your power supply back in. Uh, once, it on, once it's on, go ahead and press your set button. You'll get a letter A that comes up on the screen. Press it again and it'll change to an A1, meaning it wants you to use sample for your first set of coins. For mine, I'm using nickels. So I'll go ahead and start putting in my nickels. 
and I set my parameters for 15 so I'll need to drop in 15 nickels after that it'll automatically change to A2 for the second set of coins and that also is 15 samples so I'll drop in 15 dimes and then 15 quarters it's best if you have the coin acceptor mounted where you would like it mounted before you start doing this sampling This step is not necessary, but it's something you could do to make sure everything is working before you get it connected in your uh, cabinet. Uh, get a multimeter and set your multimeter to continuity. Once you're in the continuity uh, function on your multimeter, if you touch the two probes together, you should hear a beep. Go ahead and connect your coin and your counter wires to your multimeter cables. Uh, positive and negative doesn't matter. The first sample I'm gonna drop in is a penny, which I never programmed, so it shouldn't accept it. It should just come right back through the bottom like it just did. Uh, next coin I'm gonna do is another one that I never programmed. It's a foreign coin, drop it in. You should also get that return. Now I'll do a dime and I should get two poses. Now I'll try my quarter for seven. You might not hear the nickel because it'll be one quick pull. I'll go ahead and switch my pull speed to fast and let you hear what that is compared to the slow. But like I say, I like to leave mine on slow. Now I'll put it back on slow and switch my normally open switch to the normally closed and it should not work. You don't need to test that on yours but if you do just remember to switch it back to the normally open because that's the only way it works. This is a USB encoder that I usually put in the kit that I uh, build. Yours might be a little bit different, but they're all set up just about the same. You're going to connect the coin acceptor two wires, uh, just like you would any other button that you're setting up on the arcade. I would avoid using the up, down, left, and right though. So the wires that are going here are your coin and your counter wires. And it'll look just like any other button being connected to your USB encoder. All these other pins are where you would connect your other buttons, for example, your button 1, 2, 3, and so on. If you're using a RetroPie setup, uh, go ahead and enter your main menu, go down to Configure Input, and you're going to configure it just like you would any other controller. Uh, for mine, I have my coin set to be uh, button L2, so whenever the system asks me to press my L2 button, I went ahead and dropped a coin in the coin acceptor. Now depending what emulators you're using, uh, this portion can be a little bit different. But this is MAME 2003 that I'm setting up right now. Once you have a game open, any game, it doesn't matter, uh, press tab. Uh, you could set up for just that game or you could do a general setup for every game that uses that emulator. Once you're in this menu, go ahead and scroll down till you get to coin 1, 2, 3 and so on. Uh, stop on coin one, you're going to press enter, and that's when you're going to go ahead and drop one coin in. After you drop your coin in, it should register it as if you just push that button. For mine, it'll be L2. Some games do need each uh, player to put in separate coins. So if you want to set that up for coin 2, 3, and 4, you can go ahead and do that also. I'll also go ahead and show you how to set it up using Final Burn Alpha.
you go ahead and open any game you want that uses the Final Burn Alpha emulator. And if you haven't made any custom changes to your control, uh, to get into the menu that we're going to use, you're going to press Select and X at the same time. Once you're in this menu, go ahead and click on Quick Menu. I'll scroll all the way down to Controls. And then you're going to find your coin for uh, User 1. To make changes in this menu, you're going to use your joystick left and right. And like I say, I have mine set at L2. Once you made the change, uh, you could go to your Save Game Remap file, which will only save to that game that you have open. Or you could do the Save Core Remap file which will save to uh, every game that uses that specific emulator. I already have mine saved, which is why I didn't click it. But every time you open the game from now on, it'll automatically load that uh, save file that you just created. That's it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I was able to help you figure out how to set up your uh, coin acceptor.